I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've been putting this video off for almost a year now. Revisiting the worst of Game of Thrones is always a painful experience to go through, and after making my almost half hour long breakdown of season 8, I was broken and drained, and did not want to go back to talking about these episodes. But this video is inevitable. If I made a top 10 best episodes video, then I have to do the flip side. So get ready to feast on my misery as we dive into the worst episodes of Game of Thrones. Number 10, Season 6, Episode 1, The Red Woman. This might be a bit surprising to some people that Season 6 is leaking onto this list, but after revisiting this episode during my Season 6 Devoid of Logic videos, I relived how bad this episode was. Almost every scene here has a glaring writing issue that doesn't make any sense. From the whole situation with Sir Alistair allowing someone to take Jon's body and then getting mad about it, along with him openly admitting that he killed Jon, Sansa and Theon conveniently getting saved by Brienne when she was busy with Stannis. The power grab in Dorne is extremely inconsistent since Ilaria's Sand was literally just detained by guards for a potential coup, and now they're A-OK -okay with killing Doran. The Sand Snakes being on the ship with Jaime, Marcella, and Tristane, and for some reason they let Jaime go despite them killing Tristane. The Sons of the Harpy being able to burn Danny's entire fleet without anyone noticing. The Dothraki going out of their way to capture Danny when they didn't know who she was. Jesus. Jesus Christ. The writing tanks so hard in this episode, and I'm surprised that we were so blind to this when it first came out. Like there's really nothing to be enjoyed here. Even the dialogue is at an all time low. I was considering putting an episode from the beginning of season 7 here, but at least there's a scene or two that are at least entertaining within those episodes. Then the Red Woman ends in the most scarringly disgusting way possible, in which Melisandre takes off her necklace and we see her shriveled up ball sack of a corpse. Did we really need to see this? Not to mention that this is also inconsistent with past scenes, in which she didn't have her necklace on and she didn't turn into the old lady from Spongebob. This is a prime early example of David and Dan struggling to write an episode from scratch. Number 9, Season 5, Episode 6, Unbowed, Unbent, Unbroken. Despite the terrible scenes that transpire within this episode that we'll talk about in a second, 25% of this episode is made up of thoroughly engaging scenes of Arya doing chores. This is a point where I'm sure this whole development is way better in the books, because you can have Arya's internal monologue and extensive thought process while in the House of Black and White. But in the show, you obviously can't do that, and she doesn't have another character for her to talk to and express what she's thinking. That's why to me, this whole development with her here is so boring. Along with Jack and seemingly jumping the gun and immediately showing Arya the Great Hall with all the faces, even though she is still failing her tests. So that's a big chunk of the episode that most people will probably skip altogether. The crazy thing is that the episode gets progressively worse as it goes on. Like we then go to Tyrion and Ser Jorah getting captured by pirates, and they consider chopping off Tyrion's cock. Which is just such a jarringly weird dialogue scene, and when you compare this to Tyrion outsmarting the Mountain Tribe, it's such a massive difference in quality. In one scene you have Tyrion taking advantage of the low IQ of his captors and promising them riches, along with diffusing all the tension with his well executed humor. In the other, Tyrion just says that he has a big cock. So yeah. And also, do cock merchants even exist? Then Littlefinger's scheming is baffling and has no semblance of coherency since he gave Sansa to the Boltons, and now he wants to become Warden of the North by attacking the Boltons. And a part of this plan between him and Cersei is he'll kill Sansa. So right away, the scene is pointless because we know that won't happen. David and Dan were just like, oh, we have a bare minimum requirement to make it seem as if Littlefinger is still smart and is scheming. The episode keeps spiraling with a terrible climax of the Dorne plotline, and any action here is poorly executed with tons of cutting. It also doesn't make sense how these soldiers choose not to turn when they do so a few episodes later in Season 6. How convenient for Jamie, who's infiltrating Dorne. The final scene of the episode is probably one of the most abhorrent moments in the show in which Ramsay rapes Sansa. We really didn't need to see this, and felt more like David and Dan injecting Shock Valley to try and increase ratings. Number 8, Season 7, Episode 5, East Watch. Oh boy, I love opening an episode by getting smacked in the face with a big schlong of plot armor. Bronn must be an Olympic freediver if he was able to swim Jamie while he was in full armor across an entire lake. It's very clear that David and Dan wrote themselves into a corner by including Jamie and Bronn in this battle and needed some way for them to escape. 
and they didn't even try to make it make sense. And then Dickon randomly just kills himself, and I feel like David and Dan were probably thinking, I don't know what to do with this character, let's just kill him, screw it. And then they try to play this off as Daenerys being unreasonable, like, okay. One of the main reasons why I'm including this episode within my list is because of how absurdly fast each character was able to travel around Westeros. Just in this episode alone, we go from this general area to Dragonstone, from Dragonstone to King's Landing, from King's Landing back to Dragonstone, and then from Dragonstone all the way to the goddamn wall. This destroys any semblance of space within this world because it destroys all logic and how long it would take to travel to these locations. The main way to make it seem natural would be to have in-between scenes or even episodes to pad out that time, but David and Dan gave up and cranked up the pace. It's also funny to me how Danny returns to Dragonstone on Drogon, but somehow the Dothraki made it back before her because these people were present during the loot train attack. The other big reason why this episode is here is because of Tyrion's brilliant plan to kidnap a white to convince Cersei to help them. I don't think I need to dive into why this mashed potatoes logic is coming out of young Sheldon, because obviously it would get everyone killed and Cersei would gladly let the dead kill the North because that would be her best chances of winning at this point. From this point on, it's basically as if the dragon crew is assembling the Avengers as they zip around the globe, and it's even served up with Marvel quips like Davos quoting the meme of Gendry endlessly rowing. Thought you might still be rowing. Before this, Season 7 was mediocre and was kind of bad, but this episode self-mutilated the potential of any redemption for the rest of the season from how horrendous the direction David and Dan decided to take the story here, while also fully and utterly compromising Tyrion who was once my favorite character. Number 7. Season 8, Episode 1, Winterfell. This episode doesn't have a lot of atrociously insulting scenes that make you want to light your eyes on fire and then extinguish them in acid, but the general writing is still coded in trash, and it's apparent by this point that David and Dan stopped trying. Hell, the first line of the season is Tyrion making a cock joke. Scenes that you'd think should have nothing wrong with them, so are being fumbled. Arya and Jon's reunion is laughably short and lazily written, King's Landing is completely barren, and since it's just Cersei and Euron, David and Dan have no idea what they should talk about other than sex and elephants, oddly. Bronn is given an objective to kill Tyrion and Jaime despite Cersei not actually wanting that, so it puts his character in limbo the whole season as he goes to the Bahamas for a vacation. Theon just waltzes into Euron's fleet with zero conflict and saves Yara, rendering that whole plot point as anticlimactic. Jon and Daenerys riding dragons is shockingly reduced as sitcom satire when it should have been a triumphant reveal, and Tormund and Ed conveniently run into each other despite it being illogical. It feels like anyone could have viewed this script and addressed these issues, but the only thing I can think of is David and Dan not caring. Even some of the biggest moments feel dampened by the poor dialogue. During the grand reveal of Jon Snow being Aegon Targaryen, he just resorts to the copy and pasted dialogue that it repeats for the entire season. Not to mention that the scene ends in less than a minute after Sam tells Jon the big news. If David and Dan weren't rushing through these scenes as fast as possible, then they could have easily written 10 episodes worth. This is kind of a larger issue within season 7 and 8, but it's more noticeable for the episodes that are primarily composed of dialogue scenes. How am I supposed to form any attachment to these scenes when you're quickly ending them with very little resolution and proper development? It feels like we are just going down a checklist of plot points to set up before getting to the the big action set pieces, instead of having any semblance of being like the earlier seasons where each dialogue scene was fully explored and engaged the audience with its riveting and complex characters. Just thinking about the notion of Sansa and Jon having a scene together arguing makes me sick to my stomach at this point in the story. Number 6. Season 7, Episode 7, The Dragon and the Wolf. The last 20 minutes of this episode ranges from alright to good, but the first hour is an absolutely miserable experience. We have a 40 minute sequence of our now brain dead characters trying to have an intellectual discussion. Starting off this 40 minute long nightmare, we have Bronn talking about Unsullied who don't have cocks. Ah yes, I sure do love the topics that David and Dan decide to explore in their dialogue scenes. Then for the actual general reunion, it never has any substance. From the blatant Clegane Bowl and skippable ad, Euron randomly chiming in to make jokes, and Jon giving his Night King speech for the 100th time, this is just terrible. Terrible. For the amount of characters here, it's really sad that David and Dan weren't able to come up with a single memorable or even decent interaction. This also isn't even mentioning how this entire sequence has no point in the overall story. 
Why is Cersei even entertaining the notion that she cares about helping? What are Jon and Danny going to do about her not helping? Kill her harder? Like, what's the point of Cersei bamboozling everyone here that she's going to help? It literally serves no purpose and it just wastes time. If you were to remove this scene and went right into Season 8, almost nothing changes. The only key difference is Jamie's involvement, but you can still easily write in a way for him to get upset and to help the living. If anything, I'd prefer an arc where Jamie realizes how evil Cersei is, and that aspect slowly drives him away and he switches sides. Not because she lied. Given that Jamie's overall arc is basically the opposite of Cersei's and that he's becoming more honorable and morally good, while Cersei's becoming more wicked and is pushed further into that abyss through each death of her kids. You'd think that the death of Tommen would have a bigger impact within their relationship because Cersei was partially responsible, but that whole aspect goes unexplored, or even just acknowledging the fact that she blew up the sept. The King's Landing narrative in this season was so bare bones already that this more developed dynamic between Cersei and Jamie was much needed. Although Jamie's arc works here in this episode, I think it could have been done better. So taking out the factor of Jamie, it feels like this entire sequence is only to justify the reunion of Cersei and Tyrion, so that David and Dan can try, and utterly fail, at reliving the best of Game of Thrones' past. And the sad thing is that it worked. The critics ate that shit up, and the season received a bunch of awards. Then there's one other crippling issue in this episode, and that's the death of Littlefinger. Saying that David and Dan committed a character assassination would be kind, because this man has been done so dirty since the beginning of season 5. The more you think about anything Littlefinger does, the less it makes sense. And then to make things even worse, Bran just farts around and doesn't bother with telling anyone that Littlefinger's a menace to society. David and Dan yet again create a false sense of tension because it's completely illogical for Bran to withhold this critical information. This finale is a massive waste of time, and it also comes with a side of David and Dan plunging a dagger into our hearts for how they handled a beloved character. Number 5, Season 7, Episode 6, Beyond the Wall. This was the original point in the show that shattered my illusion that Game of Thrones was still a good show. Because before this, the flaws were there, but they were somewhat ignorable because they didn't go absolutely apeshit in terms of terrible writing. The inherent goal that David and Dan created where John and company have to go beyond the wall to steal white is single-handedly one of the most stupid directions to take the story. I still don't know why they couldn't have Danny at least fly them in and out for this mission instead of what transpired, or even Danny flying in to scoop up some whites and Drogon's claws, and bringing them back south. The fact that you can immediately with very little thought come up with a better plan than the smartest character in the show is very telling for how horrendous the whole episode is. Then the execution of the episode writing-wise is even worse. The whites that end up chasing Jon's entourage end up getting stopped because the ice broke, even though they have been shown to be able to swim. Gendry, a man who grew up in the warm climate of King's Landing, is able to somehow run miles non-stop back to the wall without his lungs exploding in this extremely cold weather. You'd think that Tormund would be more suited for that objective given that he grew up in this terrain. John's entourage constantly surviving certain death scenarios, John for whatever reason not wanting to get on Drogon because he was getting carried away killing whites, and then John miraculously surviving and having Uncle Benjamin come in like the eagles from the Lord of the Rings to save him. Did we need to have this moment for Uncle Benjamin? Then this is padded out with the dumb conflict of if Arya is going to kill Sansa. And Sansa is again listening to Littlefinger, someone who she really should not be trusting at this point. Almost every aspect of this episode sucks ass, and there may be a few moments in the beginning with some interesting dialogue, but it's jarring to constantly use cock jokes in almost every episode. Number 4, Season 8, Episode 4, The Last of the Starks. Oh boy, here we go. Between the last four episodes of season 8, I hate this one the least because it doesn't absolutely butcher a major aspect that the show has been building towards. But don't get me wrong, The Last of the Starks is still horrible. This episode includes the single most jarring point in the entire show, which is the death of Rhaegal. The fact that David and Dan play this scene to surprise the audience as random shock value is the most degenerate form of writing. A good twist should be logical within the story at the very least, and should have a small thread of build-up like the Red Wedding and the death of Ned Stark. 
Here, it feels like Dave and Dan are in panic mode as they have no idea how to match those highs from the earlier seasons. What's that? We were literally just reminded about Euron's fleet the scene prior? Oh, shouldn't we send scouting ships ahead so that we stop getting ambushed by Euron's fleet, which already happened twice in the story? You'd think that they would learn from their mistakes, but David and Dan throw out all logic in the story to bend and break it at their own will. This time to the complete detriment of one of Danny's dragons that the audience has come to love through the years. And this is just one scene in the episode. The vast majority of the celebration plays like a sitcom because David and Dan find it easier to write quote unquote comedy rather than drama, along with it including this classic line, I don't really want anymore. Which perfectly sets up the ending in which he wants to become the king. Why do you think I came all this way? The romance between Jamie and Brienne felt really awkward to me. Jon is stuck in his never-ending loop of saying McQueen and I don't want it. Bronn randomly comes in out of nowhere to then exit the story again. And Missandei somehow gets captured by Euron with a dash of coughing Varys. I am leaving out one scene that upsets me more than these, which is Jon telling Arya and Sansa his true identity. This again highlights David and Dan's utter laziness in writing, because they don't even bother to show us critical reactions of his closest family members. Like like this should be the best scene of the episode and David and Dan somehow fumble the easiest touchdown in existence. Then the final scene is so bizarre where Danny's support group shows up to Cersei's doorstep to beg them to surrender. This essentially resembles the finale of season 7 where everyone knows the outcome of this scene and it ends up being pointless. But the reason why this moment is worse is because Cersei has the means to end the war right now. She has multiple scorpions pointing at a motionless Drogon and could easily barrage Danny's whole group with arrows. Or they could literally just open the gates to reveal the Golden Company that then slaughters them. Cersei doesn't have Jaime's good moral conscience to hold her back and I'm surprised Jaron didn't encourage her to slaughter them all here. Here. But yet again, this is another contrived scenario so Tyrion could give an Emmy baiting monologue to Cersei. Number 3 Season 8, Episode 3 The Long Night. If I were to go back and remake my Devoid of Logic videos for Season 8, I'd find the most material within this episode from how crazily brainless it all is. So let's go through a quick laundry list of everything I can think of that's stupid in this episode. John and Danny waiting an unnecessarily long time to do strafe runs on the army of the dead. The Dothraki randomly charging the enemy despite being told not to. The layout of the army by having the trebuchets in the front of your soldiers and not digging more trenches. Our frontline heroes miraculously surviving a literal wave of undead that washed over them. Our non-fighting heroes hiding in a crypt that famously has corpses in them. Not creating a failsafe mechanic to light the trench on fire if a dragon becomes incapacitated, not having any siege-like materials like pouring oil on the dead, and John being able to keep fighting after crashing on Rhaegal and being A-OK, -okay, along with being surrounded by whites and surviving. Also, not to exaggerate, but almost every instance in which our characters are fighting the undead, they are put into scenarios where they should have died. I think everyone was surrounded at some point, and the whites decided to hug them instead of instantly stabbing them like they did to the extras. Let alone say Sam the Slayer wrestling the undead in the mud. You can't go a few minutes in the long night without being visually assaulted by the abysmal writing and having plot armor permeate in every single moment. What a great way to destroy any form of tension when everyone is immortal now. Then that isn't even bringing into light, or should I say darkness, the fact that you can't see anything. I get that this battle takes place at night, but any example of night shoots for battles has tangible lighting in them and you can always use the moon as a general light source. Also, also, despite this entire episode being an action set piece, there was only a couple choreographed extended fight scenes, like Arya fighting up on the wall. Besides that, all the action is just quick shots of people randomly swinging at whites, and that quickly gets repetitive. So since we covered all that shite, we can now finally talk about the ending. The fact that David and Dan are basing the entirety of this moment on subverting expectations, instead of a proper moment of payoff that has been built up to for years, is mind-boggling. It's very clear that David and Dan didn't know what to do with Arya later on in the season, so they probably panicked and gave her the Night King. Even though her killing the Night King doesn't actually utilize any of the skills she acquired because she literally just rushes in for the kill. Or fly, I should say. This episode manages to completely squander the single biggest aspect of the show that so many people were hyped to see, and it was the major moment where the casuals realized how bad the show was. Because up until this point, the show is still getting good reviews on IMDb. Number 2. Season 8, Episode 5, The Bells. 
This episode is like having the foresight that a train is about to crash, and you are powerless to stop it, and you have to witness it in slow motion. I'm sure this episode wouldn't be absolutely terrible if David and Dan bothered to do some real writing, and develop these characters and have them make realistic decisions based in logic. With real seasons composed of 10 episodes that don't just rush through the plot points in an any percent speed run, then I'm sure this moment in the story would make sense. But the fact that Danny wins the war with essentially no losses, and then decides to snap for no good reason is baffling. It creates an immediate disconnect with her character because the writers are forcing her to do something that isn't properly set up, and are only filling in a plot point that George R. Martin told them that happens. Then we are left to sit here and witness this shit for the remainder of the episode. It's really hard to enjoy this spectacle when it doesn't feel earned in any way. That's why I can't give it any redeeming qualities. Not to mention that there are still dumb aspects like the scorpion suddenly not working. Like in every wide shot that shows the scorpions, they are always motionless and they seem like they aren't manned, which is a massive difference from the episode before, that had Rhaegal get headshotted from miles away while moving. And of course, all this is accompanied by other disgustingly incompetent writing choices like Jamie saying he doesn't care for the innocents, which broke his character arc, Euron coincidentally swimming to shore at the exact spot in time, Jamie is there, Arya suddenly transforming into a cat because she now has 9 lives, and Jamie and Cersei dying to a bunch of bricks. When literally any other fan theory that predicts the fate of Cersei and Jamie is better than what you were able to come up with, then he know that you're horrible writers. Every now and then you'd find maybe one of these egregious writing mistakes in the last couple of seasons like Arya getting stabbed multiple times and living in season 6, but here, writing mistakes of that caliber happen in every other scene. The only thing here that is half entertaining is Clegane Bowl, but even that feels like fan service in a way. I feel really bad for the actual production side of things because it's a complete waste of talent and having all these amazing effects and huge sets bring to life an atrocious script. Number 1, Season 8, Episode 6, The Iron Throne. By this point in Season 8, I was inconsolable. I sat there like a lifeless husk as I witnessed my favorite show succumb to some of the worst writing I've ever witnessed. So does it get better from here? Absolutely fucking not. Not only does this episode have a plethora of god-awful moments, it's also overly drawn out with filler. We have to watch every character slowly walk through King's Landing, as if this is some deeply moving material, and Tyrion moves chairs around like an ADHD maniac. Dave and Dan are in full crisis mode as HBO and the audience expects them to output episodes over an hour long, so they just give you drool-inducing scenes that don't engage the audience in any way. Like what was the point of this scene where Grey Worm was executing soldiers, and clearly was so far gone that he didn't care anymore? Shouldn't this be setting up a showdown of sorts between Grey Worm and Jon after Jon kills Danny? Since Grey Worm clearly wouldn't let Jon live after doing that. It seems like this scene was on the cutting room floor because David and Dan didn't even bother with a notion of Grey Worm teleporting to the entrance of the Red Keep when Jon was walking there the whole time. Then I'm sure the death of Daenerys would have been enjoyable at this point, but the audience is so emotionally detached from the insane rollercoaster of dreadful writing that this scene comes across as soulless. Oh hey, Drogon, are you here to give Jon some consequences for killing your mother? Oh, you're not? Well, okay then. This leads into what I'd consider the worst scene in the show, which is the election of the new king. Everyone knows what's wrong here, but it's still hilarious to me that David and Dan try to pass off stories making a good king as if it's some kind of big and smart revelation, when it just comes across as absurdly stupid. Then somehow David and Dan keep face planting with the writing in regards to the Iron Islands not wanting independence, Grey Worm allowing Tyrion to give a monologue, Bran actually wanting it, the scene including the now sadly normal flair of sitcom comedy, and an incomprehensibly worse method of electing a king. Do you realize how much more corrupt this process will be if it's an election process between the elites? You will have to deal with intimidation, bribery, and flat out assassination attempts in order to gain votes to become king. This system is so much worse to the point that it's disrespectful to Danny's memory, even though she wanted to break the wheel by essentially making an even bigger wheel, I guess? So I don't know. The Iron Throne is an excruciating ending to season 8, and now they want to continue the story from here with Jon. I wish the best of luck to those writers because you have a colossal obstacle ahead of you. Those are my top 10 worst episodes of Game of Thrones. I hope you enjoyed going down this cursed and appalling memory lane of sorts. But yeah, thank you for watching and let me know what your top 10 worst episodes are.